Yeah. Here yeah. now, here's Elizabeth. Here's Elizabeth. <laughs> now we are both live on Instagram and Facebook. Now we are okay. live. Yeah. So, what do I have uh, here? welcome all uh, for those who are following us uh, now uh, at this very moment and also welcome if you are listening to us later on uh, as the audio podcast will be available okay um later let's see if we are the before christmas so we are now uh, talking and we'll have a, a very interesting at least for me conversation with elizabeth lentz and elizabeth is the founder of mindful movement and restore balance today she has been uh, discovering how to empower authentic living with awareness uh, of each individual helping people to connect with their bodies helping people to listening uh, in different ways to what's happening and uh, Elizabeth and I, we've met back in 2014 uh, at San Diego, at Rancho Bernardo, precisely, where we were attending um, uh, two weeks, at least I was there for two weeks, uh, and I believe you also, Elizabeth, uh, for yes. the... Um, yeah, thank you. For the seminars that Stephen Gilligan does there, specifically the Euro journey that we developed and grew upon uh, the mandala of self, how to de deconstruct and reconstruct identities, and uh, also how to figure out each one's hero's journey and uh, what is present here, to that what is uh, coming up for each one of us, uh, and is presenting as an invitation for each one to move forward in their path, in their life. And I got so amazed with the, those learnings. And uh, it, it, when I got to know a little bit more about Elizabeth, it totally makes sense. And we um, uh, came through along the years discovering more and more uh, common interests, common points of uh, contact, common um, uh, perspectives about uh, our work as coaches, therapists, label, however you feel comfortable with. And um, later on, also, uh, Elizabeth discovered about uh, my program, Greenlight, uh, the Transformation Walk, which is a program that I deliver on the Camino de Santiago, St. James Way. And uh, was it last year, Elizabeth, that you came? It was Rob? last year. It was last year. So Elizabeth came in 2019 with her husband, Rob. Um, and... And 50, 600 kilometers, more or less, walking from Lisbon to Santiago de Compostela in north of Spain. And uh, I, I don't know, we'll talk a little bit more uh, in the next minutes, but I'm guessing that there was a lot of embodiment, there was a lot of breathing with all the experiences and with all the walking uh, through those days. But before we go there, uh, I want to first ask you, Elizabeth, uh, how did you got here? How did it happen for you in your life that you managed to uh, be where you are now, doing what you are doing, the way that you are doing? Hmm, it's a good question. Um, you know, I always, even as a little kid, I already noticed when I was around adults that mm -hmm. I uh, often, that what people were saying wasn't the same mm -hmm. thing they were doing. And as a kid, I got very confused. So wh what do you follow? And mm -hmm. well, you know, as a kid, this is just how it is. And then later I studied education and especially early childhood development. And I learned different stages in childhood that a child is much more uh, sensing, feeling in the body, spontaneously responding to life. Like, through play, it sees a color, it runs there, mm -hmm. it, it, it is happy, you know when a kid is happy and when it's sad. 
So through that, I was right. also very interested in psychology. And I went on to study social work. That was like, because we had a three tier system in Europe to, to go finally to university where I could study psychology. And then when I was set on that, all the psychologists I met, they were all just talking, but they were talking, but not being that what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. So I totally said, I'm not going to be a psychologist because they should go to a psychologist. That was sort of a little, you know, thinking, you know, I'm not going to learn from them. And also, I was sort of tired of language in a way, how everything mm -hmm. became very academic. Mm -hmm. Because I'm also a more hands-on person. And uh, so things didn't chive there either. And so I actually stopped the whole academic social work thing. And I went and got a hand-weaving apprenticeship so I could work with my hands. Mm. That's actually how I did in the end social work. I worked with American Vietnamese, Vietnam vet, uh, soldiers who came to re restore and relax in Germany, in my hometown, wow. with the crafts, with the textiles. I only realized that all now after the fact that I was actually doing psychology and social work, not teaching them how to spin and weave and you know, work with their hands. Anyway, so uh, after I met my husband and we moved to America, I had no interest in social work in, in any of those things, but kept mm -hmm. reading psychology books. And finally, I came across different courses. And mm -hmm. that's how I found also yoga I found because I'm a very active person and my body is growing older. So through yoga, I found that, but I found again that it's more that inner felt sense about it. It's not about the movement. Mm -hmm. It's about how you move in with what's the quality of the movement. And mm -hmm. out of that grew the meditation because I found silence and the pranayama because I found the breath. Okay. And out of that then came the interest for more things like that. But the actual change was I had, um, and I also never really believed the words people said, you know, so people could mm -hmm. talk to me and I would see that what's behind. And, uh, and I finally had already decided nobody thinks likes me. Nobody has a feeling of, you know, I, I just decided I'm just not like anybody else. And that was okay because I could live that outside life and I could live the person, I could be my own person. I was my very own best friend all my life long. <laughs> and so when I had a really bad car accident, which I should have really not survived, and my two boys were in the car. Um, a friend suggested to go to a hut where they did some yoga and silence and meditation, and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I was basically, I should have not survived. I actually asked myself why I'm still here. You know, not. And so when I went to that retreat it was in southern utah it was just like with 10 people very quiet in a mountain hut we we were silent the whole time mm -hmm. and but there were like sort of discourses on you know on tape play and some of it was like wow i am not the only one who thinks that there's really more living in us and we are really not living the life which comes deep from men. We're just mm -hmm. trying to fit the life which is expected from us. And mm -hmm. that's what, and it was sort of, the teacher was a Buddhist teacher with the Buddhist tradition. 
So mm -hmm. I started reading all those books, and that's when mm -hmm. I finally got interested in in more spirituality because spirituality always all the people I knew weren't really grounded people. They were all people who who just were they checked out okay. of everyday life. So that was another thing. Mm -hmm. And then I found I became very interested when I did the yoga teacher's training. The only thing which really mm -hmm. stuck with me were the seven chakras, which uh, mm -hmm. were exactly like in the Western child development, the same points. Like what you need, the first chakra is the mm -hmm. first thing we learned as in education in Germany is mm -hmm. safety, nourishment, touch, oh. all those things. And so when I saw that alignment in the chakras and I noticed the movements which lets you check into them, mm -hmm. I started chakra therapy. And so chakra therapy, I found Celine Vega, uh -huh. Vega, and through her I found Stephen Gilligan. And here I was back to psychology studying with a very well-known psychologist, psychology. And I'm like, wow, a big circle. Indeed, indeed a big circle. Isn't that interesting how life keeps presenting us with, uh, I don't know, that example. We might think that we are going in one direction and when we realize, when we are aware, we are coming to uh, um, some kind of place that we already have been there before, but I don't know, on another level or with other perspective, uh, definitely with other experience. Uh, different than uh, the one that we are that we have now and um, just before you continue uh, allow me this um you touch uh, three uh, very very important uh, points for me which is child development uh, the importance of movement and connecting with the body and uh, of course language is important in his own terms in his own context with his own meanings and so on and the body and the movement and the i'll call it inner intelligence inner wisdom that we have inside our bodies is way more important and i also um that strongly resonates with me when you said uh i got a little bit confused uh between the language that the adults were saying and uh, what I understood, what the adults were doing, what they were showing with their bodies and so on and so on. Because I had the same experience. I, either looking back now uh, with uh, the learnings and the experience and the, the, the frames, the filters that I have, uh, or some memories that can, I can go back and recall. I was like, wait a minute. You are saying for me to do this, but you are doing quite different from what you are saying for me to do. So, come on, which is it? Like, decide your decide something. Uh, to tell me straight and uh, uh, pass me an aligned message about what you really intend. And um, the third thing is about touch that you mentioned a few seconds ago. I'm uh, about to start reading a book which the title is exactly Touch and the subtitle is the thing that i'm paraphrasing but anyway uh, the thing that makes us human and i bought the book maybe one and a half year ago or something and then at the very beginning um, of this pandemic with the covid and all the restrictions and all the impact that we are living i immediately remember that book mm. if touch is really one of the things that makes us human how is our experience going to be with all the restrictions that we are living, all that is coming up, and how can we cope with it? How can we adapt and how can we do something about it in order to have choice? And just before I pass the word on to you, 
uh, I'm, uh, I really want to welcome everyone that is watching us right now. And just now, uh, Diogo Wazaki entered the Instagram live. And I have a request. Uh, if you um, can please comment either on Instagram or on Facebook, please do comment if our audio and video are reaching you well. If you can listen to us. Us, just give a thumbs up, give us a, a okay, write a comment, because I also noticed that there was some bumps on the on the on the connection of our live, but we will keep it fluid and we will keep it going uh, in the conversation. And um, with that that you were uh, sharing, uh, Elizabeth, um, when you mentioned Stephen Gilligan and the place that we met there, and now for you it felt like you were. Um, I don't know. Was it closing a circle? Was was it starting, uh, closing one and starting a new one with uh, a new perspective, with more learnings? Uh, what what came up for you uh, from the seminar with Gilligan? How did it make uh, sense for you? Hmm. Well, you know. When I say a circle, it's either like the circle like uh, you do with a brush, which is still an open circle, or maybe the better metaphor is uh, a spiral, because it just was another starting point. And it's actually really interesting that I still, partly because I was raising young children, but also uh, because I still didn't enter the academics, like went to a college. So my all my ex, my education or studying is all came all organically. One found mm -hmm. the other, you know. And in that respect, mm -hmm. I'm actually very thankful for that because um, we all respond to different things through a different angle. And so when I'm mm -hmm. working with someone to, to really, you know, connect and see from where something could grow, it, you know, you have all those different modalities to use. And that I've, at first I felt like this is like I'm not sticking with one thing, but right now that's mm -hmm. coming together again that I actually feel very well prepared to meet people in my personal life as well as in my professional life on, on every level of um, where they might like to be guided or have some assistance. So in that respect, that's where I would think um, I've gone much further in Mm -hmm. In that, that also, like the yoga has totally morphed into the mindful movement where the breath suddenly became very important. And right now with the pandemic, the pranayama is, in my opinion, one of the best um, modalities to really uh, clearing the lungs, uh, invigorating the system, invigorating immune system and from the movement I found that it's almost better right now to, to have really strong breathing which you know people get through very aerobic exercises but to do that but have the movements actually move with the breath so if you can't breathe in the right way then move adjust your movements to your breath and then find balance between breath and movement. So that's mm -hmm. what I have found in that so, respect. Yeah, in that sense, uh, the, now uh, see, I'm listening to you and there's like a bunch of questions and the ideas popping up in my mind. <laughs> so I'll, 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 um, I'll make my best to keep track uh, to, to, to maintain the fluidity of this conversation. And uh, these, two, these two popped in my mind, which are, uh, you mentioned about people, of course, uh, each one of us is different. People might have different angles, perspectives, uh, views, interpretations about uh, what they are living and what they are experiencing. Uh, and um, 
I, I'll ask the two questions right away, and then you can choose how to how to answer them. <laughs> um, the first question is, uh, which would be two examples of very different angles, perspectives that you have uh, have helped people with? So basically, one person has one particular view, angle, perspective in the way that she's living, in the way that she's coping. I don't know, with the stress in, in, the, in her life, um, with the impact from COVID, the, the pandemic, uh, with the, the somehow disconnection uh, with uh, her own body. And she has a very particular perspective and angle of it. And then there's another person that has to a totally different angle perspective about how she relates with her breathing, how she relates with her body, how she managed to find ways to adapt and cope with um, what is happening in her life that might be sometimes blissful and at other times it can be really painful and harsh. So you already mentioned back minutes ago about the uh, uh, experience that you had helping uh, Vietnam vets. And uh, later on on life, I, I remember you mentioning that you have been helping other people. And recently in the last, uh, I'm not sure if it was six years, uh, you have been also um, promoting and uh, facilitating retreats, some of those uh, for women specifically. So either, either suggestion that I gave you, uh, just for, uh, please, uh, take it as your own and choose two examples. And the other question is, uh, when you mention about the, the pandemic, when you mention about the importance of pranayama, of, of being aware about how we are breathing and the balance that you mentioned, that I really saw it like a dance, uh, the balance between the body movement and the rhythm that uh, is uh, being done also specifically on the um, on yoga practice and how the breathing is following that and then at some moment there's a balance that is found between breath and movement um and with the question that popped up in my mind is many people are stuck in sometimes metaphorically in their lives in their relationships and these times, many people are stuck, literally. They are sometimes stuck uh, because they are working from home. They might be stuck because they get off bed, they perhaps swallow something for breakfast, and then they sit at the table, and they, uh, as they were at work, keep long hours seated, stuck, fixed, with very, uh, very little movement. So what will be uh, one, two, three ways. What can people do to get out of that stuckness place, if we can call it? Mm. Yeah. I know, there was a lot of words. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, yeah, and, and basically, probably just go right to the last one you ask um, between movement and breath and to me uh, movement is not just physical movement mm -hmm. so to me um, so stillness out of stillness comes movement right mm -hmm. and so if you can move with stillness then everything is fine and to really actually notice where you are first before you go in any movement is to me the key so the first thing is always that groundedness uh, mm -hmm. that people have a hard time like actually i call it feeling stuck is part of it is that they're not used to actually be still, right? Because we, um, as a society, as people, we like the distraction. We wanna always be busy or 
doing something. Also, it's a high value. If you're busy, if you're doing something, if you're productive, you're a valued member of whether it's your parents or society or whatever. So to me, that coming back into a stillness, into an alignment is the very, very first step, right? And that practice alone, the COVID time, that isolation gives us that time because, you know, to be with this energy which wants to constantly do something. So coming actually into yourself and becoming centered. And we can, um, to all the listeners out there, I don't know who is listening or not, but um, if you have any questions, please write them in the chat too. Um, yes. Just try it right now. Try it right now while you're sitting here watching the computer, just come into your body. Feel where you're sitting, mm -hmm. the, the quality of your chair, maybe your sitting bones, and especially your feet. How are they touching the ground? So really the feet and the sitting bones really allow them to become heavy and you're aware that you are connected to the ground and actually below to the earth. The earth, which basically receives you at birth, is still here. And to, to really come down to that, okay, I'm held by this body which is called earth. And then when you take the breath, like take an inhale, and you just exhale into those parts in your body which are touching the ground right now, and then go a little below the ground so you feel the roots, that you are part of this earth coming out of cyberspace, coming out from the internet, coming really into the body. And then the next inhale, inhale it into the belly, and then exhale down your tailbone so you're back on your chair. And when you inhale up into the heart space, into the chest, into the lungs, also into the back of the lungs, into the armpits, and then exhale that down into the ground. So connecting each part of you like you started to learn to walk. Feet, pelvis, inner organs that place under the ribs and then into the chest space and then even up into the mouth. And then exhale that all down your back body. And just sense inhaling into the side body. You're three dimensional, front, side, and back, all the way up until your collarbones under the armpits. And then exhale out your arms into your hands the hands which are touching, doing, pushing away, pulling in. And then inhale again, all the way up to the chest space. And this time also up into the head space, the place where we mainly live. When we are, and then Exhale down the back body again. Let it run down like a waterfall all the way down into the ground, giving it all back. And then inhale up along the spine all the way up through the neck where the skull sits on. And then exhale out through the fontanelle, through the uh, middle of the head and connect out beyond into the cosmos. Maybe Daisy Lee, my Qigong teacher, calls it the soul star, your guiding light. And then exhale, all the way down again. 
completely. Find the pause. Inhale up. And this time when you connect, allow the exhale to spray around you like a veil, you know, the big mammal in the ocean, and then let that energy go all the way to the ground, let it come up your legs again, and align everything which is not aligned all the way up beyond you and around. And then uh, one more time, really slowly inhale, feet, pelvis, belly, chest, collarbone, head, behind the eyes, pituitary gland, and then exhale out into the space and let all that energy flow around you like a fountain. And the next time you inhale, inhale into your heart space and exhale out your arms. Completely. And then just pause, sense your breath, sense your inner space or inner spaces. Just the way what's living in you right now. You might notice that there's quite some movement within you. And can you be with yourself and all that movement within you, the thoughts, the demands, the moving emotions, fear, sadness, neediness, I need this, I need that. And you're just making space with your breath, wherever it's needed, from the inside out. So like your breath is opening the pelvis, The space where all the digestive organs are and where the chest spaces, your throat, your mouth, just sensing from which place do you speak and what is that what's living in you, telling you what's needed right now in this moment for you to be at peace with yourself? And whatever comes up, just say hello to that. Maybe write it on a piece of paper so you have it for later, because you might be surprised how very fleeting those little information the body gives you are. And you forget them because your habitual behavior, your movements on the outside will just trample on all that, on those subtle things which the body wants you to know. And then take a deep inhale again, exhale. And then just come back, knowing that there's so much more you can return to. Indeed, indeed, there's so much more. Just before we, uh, I want to share what, what was happening with me and uh, something that came up. But first we have a question. We have a question from Karen. And Karen was asking if the, this exercise was, is more uh, an effort to introduce stillness or is it scanning the body throughout 
to discover where there is movement or potential turmoil? I, I have my answer, but please go, go ahead, Elizabeth. Karen, that's such a good uh, question. Um, it, it, it comes sort of, it reminds me about people who come and ask me whether I can teach them to meditate. And when you, um, and they want peace, that's why they meditate. And that's usually, um, it's very, very hard. So what I have uh, experienced and also learned is to accept that what it what is and with living with what is is to checking in so it is not necessarily the goal to be stillness it is actually to know what is moving and what wants to be known and when we can say hello to those different parts in us and really interact one at a time, you know, like I meditate every morning and mm -hmm. every morning something else shows up. I am truly interacting and making space for that part so it can come out in my life. Out of that, the more of we listen to, the more the stillness also evolves. So the stillness comes out of being with all that noise. It's sort of the same as you have two or three kids around you and or 10, and you want them to be quiet and want to be quiet or because you have something to do and they become louder and louder and more violent and more violent until they finally have your attention. So this is more the kind of approach to give the attention from what comes up. And it's very, very individual. And it's coming to the attention, not with fixing it, but with being there present and listening. And when you listen deeply with your present, really having no agenda to change it, to fix it, to push it away, to liberate it, to whatever, or to, to, to manipulate it. If you really just there as a, as a presence, like as the adult mm -hmm. for a child, then automatically the, what I have experienced is like a softening of all of that. And suddenly another side comes up and a quality which will then show up in your life. So the, the exercise is really a checking in. It's an aligning with your own, um, it's your alignment from earth to sky. And we as humans, we live in between as, um, yeah, we are just on this earth to express and be in connection to live this life, which is just so fascinating. Does that answer? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, yeah, it seems Karen uh, answered uh, just before I read her answer. Uh, I I also felt a softening, which is curious enough. You also mentioning softening, and that was my experience during this short brief exercise. And uh, I'm not sure if Karen was uh, uh, with us from the beginning of the exercise, just uh, for wh whoever is joining us now and for whatever is the exercise came from a place of how can people do something about at their homes, either uh, also metaphorically getting stuck in their lives, how can they can connect with, ourself, with uh, their, themselves and starting by grounding, grounding themselves, feeling the connection with, uh, with the earth, with, uh, with the ground, and then building up and connecting with the breathing. And from there, uh, being more present and uh, with the stillness that arises. And from there, like you were saying, Elizabeth, 
to uh, become aware of the sensations of what the body is showing. And Karen uh, was answering, yeah, I like that better. I imagine this can apply to physical. Correct, correct. It doesn't include. That's been my experience. Uh, go ahead. It's, that's correct. It can. It also applies to physical situations in the body as well, emotional as well as our thought patterns, right? Because thoughts create uh, a response from the body, and that can manifest in physical symptoms or whatever, or challenges, whatever you want to say. And uh, so it. You, you are not really saying, oh, I want to just uh, check into that. It's like, what really wants to be seen? And you might want to uh, focus on something physical, but there might be just an emotion coming in that wants to be like, whether it's anger. Here I am again with the same stuff. And, and you, you say hello to that anger because, you know, that is showing up. So really having no agenda, checking in with yourself, and then always coming back to that alignment without excluding that. So you make yourself bigger to hold all that is living within. You know, with my mm -hmm. 64 years old, I have, you know, a lot of experiences which have not always been paid attention to. Yeah, uh, I was. Um, I, I just had a break in the sound, but I hope every, everyone is hearing us well. And just a quick reminder, if you uh, are seeing us and listening to us uh, with the sound OK, just give a thumbs up or comment OK on the chat, on the comment section. And um, I, I was... Um, uh, remember, uh, remember the client that I had, the last person that I've been helping um, on a coaching process, on a self-development uh, process to gain more choices in order to save her life uh, in a different way, at least. And uh, I've been experiencing that with also other people and sometimes also with myself, which is you um and um, what we believe is that we it, it will be healthier i'll put it in these words it will be healthier and better to include in the system what is already inside the system from that place of alignment from that place of connection from that place of being centered and grounded and i see and i know uh, people that really want to exclude they, they want to put outside, for example, uh, anger sensations, the anger emotion, or sadness, or whatever label emotion that uh, people learned uh, in, their, uh, in their first years, that it, it will be a bad sensation, it will be a bad emotion, it will be blah, 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 not so interesting, not to be experienced. And uh, we both have, been, have the different experience and have been working, helping people in a different way to find a way in the balance to get off of balance into a place of imbalance with connection and without judgment, without an agenda to reach out, if we want to put it that way, reach out to anger, for example or reach out to whatever is behind or beneath causing the turmoil. So with all of this, sometimes people will really appreciate uh, an exercise that you, like you just shared with us. So thank you very much for that. And sometimes people will like to get support. In our team uh, about Restore Balance, we were asking about uh, what puts you off balance? What causes you, what happens that drives you off balance? And at the same time, 
what happens that provides you balance? How can you provide and create balance for yourself? In your experience, Elizabeth, what will be a useful step, a small action, uh, an example of what can people do in this transition be between off balance to a place of balance? And what, what, what is balance exactly? <laughs> <laughs> well, balance is first of all not static. I think um, Yay! someone I, I've been I've been waiting for one of us to say that spontaneously. <laughs> it isn't so funny that that people uh, balance is this, and uh, sometimes people get the idea that is static. So if balance is not static, well, how does it happen? What is it? What is it? Well, if I look at it in, um, and that when it comes back to the centeredness, right? So mm -hmm. we are living our life and life shows up as it shows up, right? Mm -hmm. And we are dealing with everyday life. We're dealing with uh, illnesses, with physical challenges, with injuries, relationships. And so, we, we are out there trying to, um, you know, manage what the, the, the practice is exactly that, what we just did. And it doesn't have to take that long to just make sure, okay, where is my ground? How am I aligned? So you come back to that vertical alignment and you sense the imbalance. So you know you're way overboard, just caring for this one person in your household while the rest and your relationship is going away. Right? You, so you're totally focused on that. You're, you're even off your center so far. So you bring yourself first to center Mm. And from there, the listening deeply, what from where can I go? Obviously, the path I'm going is off center, and you know, I'm not sleeping well, I have heart palpations, blah blah blah. And then you come back, and then you will notice it. And it's not always this coming to center is not always pleasant because that's what you're trying to get away from, right? So just know that too. There's this myth, oh, I just meditate and I come to center and everything is happy and blissful. It's not always the case. It can be, definitely, but that's not the point. The point is that you can reorient it, that you can steer your life in the direction to where you feel your inner peace. And that inner peace might not be the peace of your partner. Mm -hmm. Like that, you might be serving the partner so he has a very happy life, but you yourself, you're actually not really fully centered. So when that coincides, then you, you will feel it. You feel equanimity within you and by feeling equanimity and balance within you. So you have to start the work here. There's no way around it. You have to start the inner work before the outer life changes. The outer life is a really good, you know, a, a mirror to know this is really strange. I constantly create conflict. Everywhere I go, nobody understands me I create conflict. Maybe look, is there conflict within you? Coming back to center. Mm. So that's yeah. all I can say to that. I don't know whether that was on the point or not. <laughs> that's totally fine. And uh, yeah, I see your point. I, I also believe that. And at the same time, I also believe that sometimes 
uh, it, I'm not sure about the notion of the outside world will be a mirror to our inside world, to our inner world. Um, sometimes, and I've been experiencing that myself and also with people that I've helped, that's the case. Uh, sometimes it seems that, I don't know, the words that, that are coming up are like, I might be experiencing, uh, so meaning when the outside world uh, interferes with my inner peace or, or with my life experience and the quality of my daily experience, sometimes it seems to me, uh, as far as I can witness, that sometimes is like uh, a reminder of something the, the person is not doing to uh, live the life as she wants, to save her life as she wants. So an example will be um, someone that speaks up for themselves. And I notice that and somehow that like touches a button inside me. And I'm like, oh, oh I, I don't like so much the way that th this person is speaking. And uh, as far and uh, uh, it's just my, my perspective, of course, it's just my experience and interpretation. But sometimes it could be like inside myself, I might have learned not to speak up in the past. And that's still present. That's still uh, at some level, that's still going on. And uh, when I recognize outside an example of what I really want to do or what will be helpful for me in uh, some uh, specific context and situations, there's like um, someone with, with the ring bell, ding, ding, ding. Here's an example of what you would like to do. That's one way to do it. Will it be the one that you want to do it? I don't know. But that's one way. So you could try that you could experiment and after that experience uh, of course getting the feedback getting the learning from the experience and then adjust and adapt if that's the way that you want to speak up um, and i see the connection between this with what we were sharing about uh, uh, the outside world being a mirror of the inner world because sometimes that's a reflection of uh, I don't know, uh, a change that is being called upon, um, uh, 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 an inside um, um, tipping point that a person is reaching and that if she does something differently, she could have a different experience, more uh, adjust, more aligned what, uh, with what she really wants in order to save her life. But anyway just sharing what, what came up in me also. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a firm believer that sometimes it's really about a, a direct reflection about uh, conflict outside, conflict inside. Sometimes it's a matter of, uh, I cannot decide, I cannot take decisions at some uh, specific context or whatever it might be. And um, just before we are, uh, we are now getting closer to the end of this uh, live talk and there's people still joining in. So welcome to whoever uh, joined us in the last minutes. Um, if you didn't catch it, please go back and uh, uh, watch uh, or listen to the exercise that Elizabeth so beautifully um, facilitated and showed us, uh, which is about getting grounded, getting a vertical in line, alignment, and getting to a place of stillness to be more aware and present to from there deal with more choices uh, about whatever is happening in our surroundings in our context and um, two brief questions um, before we we close and we we say goodbye uh, to our viewers and listeners for now uh, one is someone might be watching or, or listening to us and uh, they might go, yeah, yeah, th th that's that's uh, the totally fine. That's really beautiful. That seems like wonderful. And um, I'm not seeing a way to apply that, for example, with my angry boss or with my demanding uh, boss or with my uh, unsatisfied um, 
live companion with my spouse. Um, and some might be in a place where they're like, uh, okay, I kind of get the, 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 the relevance, I get how, how it makes sense to me also. And uh, you're saying just by connecting to my body, to my breathing, I will get a different way to act and react on this world to whatever is happening out there. I, it, Am I getting uh, uh, clear on my on my question on my on my if you will a little bit of uh, what what will you say to that to, to that person Elizabeth? I would validate it that we are sometimes feeling so helpless, you know. Mm -hmm whether it's in regards to a relationship or to a, you know, a superior uh, boss, if you want to say it, and you're very dependent on that person for your mm -hmm. income. You're also dependent on getting appreciation and being uh, liked. And uh, part of it is also especially for women, but I think it's for boys the same. You want to please. Uh, so I see the dilemma. And mm -hmm. uh, it, to be honest, to, to be aligned and to, to actually follow through with action, because the whole thing, just being aligned in your room at home, is, is only half of the game or the taught the what we do it's then how do you apply it in your daily life as soon as i step out of this room you know mm -hmm. do i strip off my my coaching coat and my and then just yell at my children or at my husband or demand this and this so to stay aligned takes courage and it takes practice and the practice, when you think about what kind of behaviors do you have, which you keep doing over and over again, and they put you in a state of imbalance, whether it's with food, mm -hmm. eating the wrong food, whether it is in your physical uh, exercises, or whether it's your mental state, uh, the kind of stories which are going on. What is it? And that's the only way you can only find that out. I cannot find that out. I can help you, guide you into that inner space. But you have to have the courage and you have to be honest to yourself that you're just living the program you're programmed for. And, there's an, and the, the other thing, it's not so easy because the program is not all bad, right? So you also have to be able to discern, right? What takes it for me to live a life in peace and stay true to myself while I live with others? We are social animals. I can do that by myself and live like a hermit. But I don't think in this time and age, that's our task. Our task is to, to do the inner work and then live that inner work actively to the best you can and then you practice it outside and you will fall down. It's not going to be like a success story right away. Mm -hmm. And so is it worse for you to practice, to stay aligned, to follow your truth, to try it out, but staying open to also and have enough humility or humbleness to say, ah, that's not really working. I understood that wrong, you know, and then you come back, you come all the way back. This coming back is the key. That's all I can say to that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm just going to quickly share, hello, hola, uh, a Jurema. Uh, Jurema is, um, is a woman that I, was a part of a group and it's interesting enough that she's just joined the live when you were talking about practice. 
because uh, I was there in Angola, in Africa, to um, deliver a training about uh, well, about personal development, about communication, uh, emotion management, and many um, and other topics. And uh, I was very specific and uh, um, persistent in inviting them to practice, practice, practice. So at some point there were like three months of training, and at the very at the very end they were like, "Yeah, I know, teacher, I know. Practice, practice, practice." <laughs> <laughs> so they, they really they really took up my invitation they really accepted it to put it into practice and then from the interaction between environment and the feedback that they get uh, adapt and continue to practice the practice um integrating that feedback uh, which I, I understood that it's what you are suggesting um just uh, before we go uh first of all tell us where people where can people find you People that are watching this right now, people that will be listening to this uh, later on on a podcast, Greenlight Other Choice. Elizabeth, where can people find you? Well, the best way is really to email me. It's Elizabeth with an S, as you can see on the screen, mm -hmm. at restorebalancetoday.com. And oh, great. Joe can put it in the chat. Or I can, put I can it write in. it. Okay, Elizabeth, uh, can you repeat it, please? Elizabeth with an S. Yeah. Yes. At restore balance today, not tomorrow. Today. Dot com. Today. Okay, got it. I'm gonna share it now on the on the comment section on Facebook, and uh, if it's useful, uh, we, you can do it also on Instagram after we finish the the live. And um, just before we go, uh, we are uh, about to, yeah, we reach one hour, one hour of conversation, and we we'll could keep going <laughs> through, throughout the day. Um, Elizabeth, please uh, tell me um, this. Uh, imagine there's a person uh, out there in the world, and this person is, uh, uh, this person is stuck. This person is waiting, is uh, on hold to get uh, a green light to move forward with our life. Which will be the green light that you will give that person? Which will be the green light? Well, what I am telling every person that they are meant to be here. You have a place on this earth, otherwise you wouldn't have been born. And you are meant to be here and you are a thread in the fabric of life and I would love to help you to find that color of the thread which is truly yours so you don't have to run around like a chameleon and trying on different coats so uh, that's what I say that everybody has a purpose and it's not necessarily the huge purpose out there. It can be just creating a home where your family loves to come and is always happy to just be themselves and relax and be there and looking forward to find a place where they can just be themselves. And that's a homemaker, which has such yeah. a little status in our society is just creating a home has really fallen to the side. And many women feel so forced to do something really special and they go crazy, even if they don't have it to do it financially, just to feel like they're worthwhile to be here. So I'm just feeling fine gift you have. I believe everybody has a gift and I am just always excited when I can help somebody to find that gift they have. Awesome. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, th that deeply uh, connects and resonates with me. Um, you are meant to be here. Uh, this seems to be like a, a golden key, uh, a precious pearl to take from this, uh, from this conversation. 
and because uh, you are here and you came to this world and since you are here you were meant to be here and you can find um, and you can choose what you want to create on this world uh, it's um, just a quick sharing that it reminded me um, we talked at the beginning of the conversation about the Camino and about uh, the program that I deliver there and the first the very first time that I walked the Camino um, there, there was this big big question that popped up which was who am I who am I and why am I here at some moments it was like why am I here going uphill <laughs> But at the other moment, it was like, why am I here? On this earth, why, am, why did I come to this slime moment in time? And um, some, sometimes people disconnect from that. I've been witnessing that. I've been watching people disconnecting with, uh, uh, I really want, what I really, really want is to create a home, like you just said. What I really, really want is to make a difference to my grandchildren's future. What I really want is to pass on uh, some ways uh, that are ways and values that are ecological, that are uh, sustainable, that are uh, they, they take you to an, into account the system and the other people. So it's not just not about my values and about my goals. It's about uh, living as a village, living as a community, uh, and uh, reaching out to support people. And that's why also why we both are here. We are, um, from what I understood and what I felt between the two of us, we are here to support people and to facilitate their choices. So can they, uh, in my case, so they can save our life and um, have a, a totally different experience from what they have learned to, to have. And um, with uh, that and with uh, what Elizabeth just uh, gifted us, you are meant to be here. And uh, since you are meant to be here, if at any moment you want to discover more about that, you want to grow and learn uh, different practices, uh, either with uh, chakra therapy, with um, uh, move by mindful movement, and uh, with other approaches, that um, Elizabeth has been uh, uh, deepening throughout the years. Uh, do contact uh, Elizabeth either to the email that is already here on the comment section on Facebook, and that will be shortly on the Instagram. And uh, uh, take your time to experience the exercise and uh, do it again and practice the exercise that Elizabeth shared with us, which is really a simple exercise and it's about uh, awareness, presence, and connection with yourself. And uh, since there seems to be like this inner intelligence, intuition, unconscious, inner wisdom, call it whatever label you want, but there's something right now that without our rational command is uh, making movement, is uh, uh, having the heart beating, the, 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 the lungs feeling, with uh, with hair without our conscious effort and it has been always here for us and it will continue to be so let's see what comes from there this is my invitation and elizabeth thank you thank you very much i really appreciate you accepting my invitation and uh, spending this um, now one hour and ten minutes with us um if at any moment uh, you want to uh, connect and uh, uh, do something uh, uh, again with uh, with these live experiences. We will talk again, and uh, if not sooner, uh, we will uh, we will uh, connect um, in a, in a few days to to share to share how things are going and to share um, with this uh, ending of the year and starting a new cycle to twenty twenty one. Uh, hopefully, I will get the program Green Light Transformation Walk up and running uh, finally again after the suspension this uh, this year with uh, the pandemic with COVID. And uh, what, what will be the next thing that you'll be doing uh, with your uh, events, with your uh, with your work? 
You're asking me? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I have been doing uh, the online one-on-one -on -one, uh, mm -hmm. sessions and I have been going, if people wanted to do it outside, we would go for a walk and that's about, I don't have any big plans. I might uh, soon in January, but that's when somebody would have to send me their email to get invited. Um, uh, once a week practice for an hour in the morning, uh, joining into my Qigong practices. That's wow. what I'm offering in the new year on one day a week, but it's not set and I will send that out to anybody who gives me their email information. It okay. will not be online or on social media. Yeah, otherwise, one-on-one -on -one is how I have been working through the pandemic and it has been wonderful. Yeah. And I think with that, take really good care of yourself. Be very, very kind to yourself in all this kind of work and just be in the present moment ground yourself find your breath and know that you're alive and you're here right now and that is a gift by itself awesome in whatever situation you find yourself yeah. indeed indeed okay. i support that uh, let, let's uh, let's continue just uh, us a few more minutes and um, we we are we are ending now the this conversation uh, so hope to see you again soon and elizabeth just stick around a, a minute or two and uh, we will uh, we'll say goodbye thank you and now now and now and now